Well, good morning, everyone. We're so blessed to be able to uh, celebrate Mass back in our church now that we have a steady Wi-Fi, strong Wi-Fi signal and a strong, speedy Wi-Fi service. So we welcome you to our celebration of Palm Sunday in our church, Parish Church of St. Anne's. Um, as many of you know, 
the Vatican as well as the Archbishop has uh, instructed us. So we are to celebrate Palm Sunday without the blessing of the palms. So how we normally gather and we, we hear the story of Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem, well, this year we won't be able to do that. We won't be blessing palms. But what we will do is when we are able to gather again as a community, when we're all back together again, we'll bless the palms then and we'll distribute it and give it to you then. We're going to begin then in song. We're going to, we have uh, Bishop Daniel Walsh as our celebrant, and we invite you then to join us in song, um, The King of Glory. Glory comes and nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of Glory? How shall we call him? Who is Emmanuel, the promise of ages? The King of Glory comes and nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he goes among his people, filling the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather together to praise our Lord, let us first of all call to mind our sins with sincere sorrow, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our psalm response is, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My, my God, God, my God, why, why have, have you abandoned me? me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the, feast, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, 
they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and the blessing, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on, I shall not drink from, will not drink this fruit of the wine until the day when I will drink it with you anew in the kingdom of heaven my, with my father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withstanding a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, <clears throat> your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword. 
drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father and he will give me, not provide me at this moment with more than 12 legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which said that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally, Two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophecy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Jesus, Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. 
after consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in, my, in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which one of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him, weaving a crown out of thorns. They placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself, so he is the King of Israel. 
Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Let us pause and kneel. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earthquake, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs, after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the, and the man with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor who was still alive said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders. Then that the gave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and said to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today we start this Holy Week a week wherein we remember the tremendous love that the Lord Jesus Christ had showed to us by dying on the cross. Love without sacrifice is mere emotion. 
is vain but love is shown or love is proven when there is sacrifice when we look at jesus on the cross may we be able to see that all this is god's love divine love for all of us i would like to reflect with you the words of jesus on the cross my god my god why have you abandoned me and this is the responsorial psalm we had my god my god why have you abandoned me maybe in these days of um of this uh quarantine or this shelter in place we also ask the lord my god my god have you forgotten us have you have you ignored us have you for have you abandoned us now let us see what jesus was saying when he was crucified on the cross first let me assure you that these words of jesus are very real meaning the anguish the pain those are very real because jesus who shared totally in our humanity was suffering on the cross he felt the pain he felt the anguish it's not like something that uh, he he was making up but because of all his because of his humanity he he experienced all this difficulty second with this pain with this anguish what did he do did he complain normally or many of us might be might resort to complain but jesus did not complain what jesus did was to pray what jesus did on the cross was to pray to god to unite himself with the father you see it is important for us to realize that at this moment when jesus was shouting or was saying my god my god why have you forsaken me he was actually praying this prayer is the prayer of psalm 22 and in order to to appreciate this psalm let us see what this psalm is trying to tell us my god my god why have you forsaken me are the is also a prayer of king david when he felt that god has abandoned him and he used so many descriptions of those sufferings of of a uh, uh, symbol of or uh, he used symbols and uh, uh, descriptions of how he was suffering and that is what we heard in our responsorial psalm today however it did not end there it ended with trusting in god who hears our prayers trusting in god who hears the prayer the cry of the of the ones who is afflicted and so how does this apply to jesus those description of king david in the psalm of being mocked of being uh nailed to the cross of of all this point is a prophecy of how jesus will suffer so what was a um, symbol or a metaphor of the suffering of david is real and actual with jesus and the son ended with with this prayer saying for god has not spurned or disdained the misery of this poor wretched god did not turn away from me 
but heard me when I cried out. Psalm 22, verse 25, is giving us an assurance that in the midst of all these difficulties and pain, God does not turn His back on us. We just have to learn to trust in Him. So when Jesus was crying out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was actually expressing trust in God. And if we look further down in that uh, psalm, it ended by saying, All the ends of the earth will worship and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations will bow low before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, the ruler over the nations. So this will not end in despair, but in triumph. The crucifixion of Jesus, his suffering, does not end in God abandoning him, in God uh, taking him for granted. But this suffering of Jesus will not end in despair, but in triumph. Because the glory of God, the victory of God will be manifested, will be shown. And so, my dear friends, when we cry out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Remember, it goes with trust. It goes with surrendering ourselves to the will of God. And you know what our catechism teaches us about this line? It is so beautiful in, the, in our catechism. Uh, paragraph uh, 2606 tells us, All the troubles for all time of humanity, enslaved by sin and death, all the petitions and intercessions of salvation history are summed up in this cry of the incarnate word. Here the Father accepts them and beyond all hope answers them by raising his son. It means in this cry of dereliction, in this cry of abandonment, with, together with all our cries, with all our pains, with all our petitions and intercessions, we, Jesus gathers all of this and brings it to the Father. And the Father hears our cries. Our Father hears our pains. And He answers us by raising Jesus back to life. It brings so much hope. Trust in the mercy of God. And so this Holy Week, let us uh, meditate, let us reflect more on the love, on that tremendous love that God has for us. Jesus, His, his love is proven through the death of His Son. Not to make his son suffer, but because love is proven through sacrifice. May we all have a wonderful and fruitful week meditating and reflecting on God's love for us through the passion and death and resurrection of Jesus. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Amen. God showed his love for us when he gave us his only begotten son. With confidence, let us approach our heavenly father with our needs. For ourselves and all Christians, that though we may be separated and apart, we may remain united in heart and spirit with you and with one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local and world leaders, that your spirit of wisdom and grace may support them and help them make timely decisions for the well-being of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who care for the sick, for our heroic doctors and nurses, for those who do essential services for us, for those working on a cure, Lord, may you sustain them with your grace. Protect them from all harm, so that they may safely return to their Lord, to their loved ones each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been affected financially during this crisis, for all who have been laid off, for those struggling to pay their bills, give us this day and every day our daily bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety and well-being of all, especially the poor, those without access to clean water, those who suffer from food insecurity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our communi community who are sick, we remember Father Brian Costell, Father Francis Hoon, Andrea Bryden, Stephanie, Ruby, and all afflicted by this coronavirus, that you may strengthen their bodies and heal them of their infirmities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we remember the deceased of our community, Rose Liang, Chun Yan Po, Kenneth Yoda, Rosemary Quaternick, Julie Principe, and the thousands who have died from this virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Raymond and Susan Dominici, and, on the, and we also give thanks to God for the occasion of the birthday of Zeni Mangaba. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you who did not spare your own Son for us all, hear now our prayers made in faith 
and in your goodness grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. This world is for them, who I made them to share in the divinity of Christ, who humble themselves to share in the divinity of Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of the sea, far be within the fold of all the eternal church. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that through, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may already feel the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you in one joyful celebration as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity according to your will, according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son, you and God, who by the will of the Father made us one spirit, do you bless me by the word of the Holy Spirit, by the shed of blood, by the death from all my sin, and from all the evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and help all my Father, Son, and Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Realizing you are not able to receive the Eucharist at this celebration, let us make a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to reserve you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection may you lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your, your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family whom you have whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who live and reign forever and ever amen, amen. may almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen our mass is ended go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning on Palm Sunday without the palms. <laughs> we hope to see you soon when we can all gather as a community of faith and praise and thank the Lord for all the gifts and love he has showered upon us. God bless you and have a wonderful day. God bless you, Bishop.